Hello! Today we're going to talk briefly about calculating a least cost ration. I'll walk you through uh, a basic least cost ration calculator in Excel, talk about how to use it, and then I'll talk just a little bit about the Excel functions behind the actual calculations. First off, when we calculate rations, if we just have two rations, we can use a simple Pearson square and the math is pretty straightforward. However, what if we have more than two rations? Or what if we want to balance for protein and fat? Or what if we want to minimize our cost? You can do all of that mathematically on paper, but it's much simpler to use a least cost ration formula or least cost ration calculator. I've got a simple one here in Excel. Uh, it's color coded to make it a little easier to use. Uh, the green cells, as you see down here in the in the notes, are where we enter our values. So this big block of cells here are where we put our, our values. The ingredients go across the top row. In this example, I've got cracked corn, soy whole pellets, oats, corn gluten, soybean meal, corn oil, flaxseed meal, rice bran, and lysine. Uh, then down here in these green cells, we put in what we want in our ration. If we want a ration that's between 10 and 11% protein, those are the values we put in the box. For TDN, same thing. We want a ration that's between 30 and 100% TDN. And then for fat, then all the other nutrients. If we don't know, uh, if we say we're not balancing our ration in, with zinc in mind, you can leave the values at zero for a minimum and 100 for a maximum. That comes in handy up here in case your feed tag doesn't have quite all the information you need on it, you can leave some of these blank. For example, zinc. Zinc is blank all the way across, and that won't mess up the calculator at all. The next thing, the gray cells don't change. Those are put in there to, to label the rows and the columns. And then the red cells are what Excel calculates for us. So, let's go ahead and calculate a ration. We know we want to use corn, soy whole pellets, and oats as our main ingredients. So down here, the maximum we want in the batch, I put for corn, 3,000 pounds. For soy whole pellets, 4,000 pounds. For oats, 2,000 pounds. Soybean meal, 2,000 pounds. Corn oil, 500 pounds. Now, corn oil can be tricky because we don't, of course, buy it in pounds. We buy it in gallons, oftentimes. So there's a little widget down here to calculate, uh, to convert pounds to gallons, which is nice. If you have 167.4 pounds of oil, that means you have 23 gallons. If you have 56 pounds of oil, you have 7 gallons. And that's a little, that makes mixing your feed a little easier. So we have all the data we want entered in our green cells. Then you click here to figure the least cost ration. Excel will take just a minute to do its wizardry, and it brings up this box. It says, Solver found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. So click OK, and it tells us our value, our values in our ration. So we know we need 609 pounds of corn per ton, 1,000 pounds of soy whole pellets per ton, 56 pounds or 7 gallons of corn oil, a little bit of rice bran, a little bit of lysine. Now, the solver, or the way this program is set up, it solves for minimizing our cost per hundredweight. So, how does it do that? We're not going to spend a lot of time belaboring this, but I wanted, you to show, I wanted to show you this. This is done by using the solver when we design the Excel program. So, I'm going to click on solver. Now, if solver doesn't show in your version of Excel, you can click on File, Options, uh, add-ins. Then down at the bottom where it says manage Excel add-ins, click go. And then in this box you need to click the solver and click OK. And that will bring up on the data tab this button on the right called the solver. If you click on that, you'll see what Excel is doing for us. It's, it says set objective L16. So in cell L16 of the cost per hundredweight, and it's set to minimize the cost per hundredweight. And then I have all the different ranges I want Excel to stay in. I started by saying that I want to by telling it I wanted to keep each ingredient between my minimum and maximum values I wanted in the batch. Then the middle set of constraints are the 
the nutrient requirements. I wanted this value over here, my total protein in the ration, to fall between my 10 and 11 percent. And then finally, the last constraint, I wanted my total batch to be what I had entered. So there you have it. For using the solver and an Excel spreadsheet, we can make a simple ration calculator that goes beyond the two ingredients we do in Pearson's and can minimize cost while keeping our feedstuffs within certain constraints. Now we keep each ingredient within certain constraints to help us with some palatability issues. For example, some species of livestock have specific things they won't eat. Uh, Cottonseed meal comes to mind specifically in that most species won't eat a ration made up entirely of cottonseed meal, but it's very cheap. And so mathematically, a ration might come out to be the cheapest with a lot of cottonseed meal. So, but we know that the animals won't eat that. So we can set the constraints down here in max we want in batch to keep that from being an excessive amount in the batch so high that the animals wouldn't eat it. So there you have it. There's a quick overview of the pro program. In closing, remember when you go to use this that you only enter values in the green cells. The gray cells don't change. They're just your labels. And the red cells are the values that Excel calculates. That's it. Have a great day.